This is Harry Judd for Boxing Social in association with Bet Fred. We're here in Ann Coates in Greater Manchester. I'm delighted to be joined by Steve May. Look, first of all, how are we, Steve? Yeah, I'm great, you know, good, good. Good stable in here today, a few working. Um, yeah, you've obviously got Liam behind me, big fight coming up on October the 8th. Just tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's a great fight for Liam. Um, he's got a tough fight in Arkin, who I think is a really good, solid pro. He's been in there with some big names, uh, the best in Britain, really. And he's always gave a good account of himself and I know he's a tough Scottish kid so he'll be coming down and he'll be trying to win the belt. In terms of now, um, you know, it's getting ever so closer to the fight, how does training start to wind down or how, how does it go around this time? Yeah, so we've been waiting for the opponent for about the last four weeks. We've had a lot of names through at us. Um, we are trying to go down different paths and stuff but um, it... Liam got made to um, sort of mandatory for the English and we've been trying to work that fight out. It didn't happen, so we've gone down the WBO European route, which is a great title. It's one that I've always like really held in good prestige. So Teddy Flanagan won it, it moved him on to a world title after that. But it'd be nice for Liam to box for the WBO. I think that's what level Liam's at, um, European level. And, and if he goes on and wins that, it'll give him a good good ranking again after that um, there'll be a lot of options we still would love to go down the British route um, as I think Liam should have obviously been British champion a couple of years ago but yeah it's a great fight with Arkin it's a good domestic fight and I think it'll be exciting that British fight was that the one with, with Chris Jenkins yeah, the draw yeah. yeah so obviously everybody's seen the fight and I know we're talking about old ground but Liam was winning the fight um, it he dirt Jenkins a few times and there was an head clash and there was a few seconds left of the round and Jenkins done everything he could do in his power to get it called off. Um, I think normally the referee had let the, the bell go and go back to the corner but I think there was words before the fight, if um, if it get cut can we, can we uh, make sure it gets called off and stuff like that. So there was definitely some, I've never seen a fight get called off like that. And Jenkins had already won a fight on cuts, uh, the previous fight. So I'd say Liam boxed lovely. He, um, he was going to win the title that night. And that's why Jenkins never boxed him again. They said we'll give you the rematch, um, everything like that. Normally, it would have been an immediate rematch by probably the board as well. But um, for, for whatever reason, it didn't happen. So we've been put on the sidelines a little bit. But hopefully Liam can come back now and win the title that he deserves. Liam has been out and about sparring. The Avenisian he's been sparring with, uh, Kel Brook. Just tell me a little bit about you know, those experiences. How good are those for him? Yeah, they're great fighters. Um, he's even been doing stuff with Liam Smith, mm -hmm. who again is showing good form. He's just won another big fight again. So Liam's capable of going round and sparring. All these kids uh, in the past have took him to sparring. Josh Taylor always gives a good account of himself, Liam, because he's a good, true pro. He, um, he always keeps himself in decent nick and he's got a good boxing IQ. So sometimes when he steps up the levels, people think like he's in with world champions and stuff. But I think that's when his boxing comes into its own a little bit because he gets to test his skills out a little bit more. And when, when you're in with a good pros and you're fighting them and stuff, they try and defend. And um, what you've been taught, your, your higher level stuff, it seems to work against the better fighters. So he always goes in and gives them very good rounds and he gets them prepared for the world title fight. So it shows you that Liam's doing something right if they want to use him for these big fights. Well, he gave himself, uh, made a good account of himself in the Avenistian fight, didn't he? Yeah, he did, but because of uh, the early stoppage, obviously, it sort of didn't look good on paper, but... He went out, he landed some good shots himself and um, let's say a couple of them was registered in and he got hurt right at the end of the first round and I think if uh, he wouldn't have got hurt there, Evan Eastern's corner might said, listen, calm down a little bit because you're getting caught yourself. Mm -hmm. So it sort of gave Evan Eastern that little bit of, um, no, I'm doing the right thing here, so I'll keep pushing on. But if Liam could have just held him, held him off that little bit longer, a little bit longer, then he might have been able to... Uh, the success he had early on, it might have continued throughout the rounds, but he just uh, made a couple of mistakes and probably stayed in um, in the shootout for a little bit too long. If he'd have got his shots off and got out of there a little bit earlier, then um, the early stoppage might not have come.
What are you expecting from this fight um, in Melbourne soon? I just think that Liam's um, a better all-round boxer than, than, than Arkin. But Arkin's got power, you know what I mean? He's hurt, he's hurt people who's never been stopped before. He's dropped people who normally don't get dropped. So mm. we've got to be careful of that. Um, like I say, he's tough, he's gritter, and he, he, he's, he's experienced as well. I say he's been in some good domestic fights as it is. So, no, I'm, I'm expecting a really good fight. Got Zach Miller behind us, um, skipping now out on October the 22nd. It's good to get him out, busy. Yeah, um, and hopefully we're going to get um, a title fight for him. So um, Kevin Murray is his manager, he's um, doing a great job with him. He knows how to bring Zach along. Um, he's 9-0 and already, but we don't want to rush him too much yet. We still feel like he's physically developing. Mm. I think he was a late developer, Zach, no, no coming through. And, He's only just started to get his man strength now. And like I say, we've got a team around him who knows when to push him and when not to. But I think Kevin's um, working on getting him a central area title fight. And I think uh, it'd be nice to get him that. We don't, if, he, if he wins it, we won't rush him on after it. But it's, uh, it'll be good for him and his fans and his confidence. When can we expect that? Late 2022 or early 2023? Oh, I think we're expecting it in the next fight. Yeah, so if we can get him the central area then it would be nice. Uh, I'd say it's a step up, but I think he's ready for the step up for something like that, but we won't rush him on if he does win it. We'll uh, keep him where he is for a few more fights. We spoke before um, we started filming about, um, about Terry Flanagan. Um, you know, just give us a little update on, on what you know about him and what he's doing. Yeah, so he's coming in the gym, he's helping me out. He comes in with the amateurs. Um, he's this weekend coming, he's going to do his pro licence, he's going to start helping me out in the corners, doing the cuts. Uh, he's always done the lad's hands anyway. He's always been there on fight night for them, but because he's not had his badges, he's not been able to do the corner. So he's hopefully going to follow in Frank Hopkins' footsteps, which is somebody who Terry really looks up to. Um, we love Frank for what he's done for us. The best cutsman in the business he is, not just for what he does in the corner on fight night, but for what he does in the changing rooms. He's a top, top man. He understands boxing. He can um, he can calm coaches down, calm the fighters down, and I think his knowledge and his words of wisdom to the fighters before they go out to the big fights and the main event it's um, it sort of calms them down and relaxes them. So top man Frank Hopkins, the demolition man Jack Rafferty. Latest on him? Yeah, I was looking good. <laughs> I'm, I'm, st I'm still gutted. It's um, he's recently got injured, so. Obviously, this is probably the first people know about it. I think we've let the promotional team know and they've let his opponent know. But, um, yeah, so I'm, a bit, I'm a bit, still a little bit raw. He's broke a bone in his foot, um, which is unexpected. But, listen, we've got to deal with it. I think he'll be out for six, maybe to eight weeks. But, as you can see, he's been in the gym with his cast on it. He was, he was in yesterday. So... He's on it, he's on it. He's going to do everything he can, keep on his diet, his vitamins, and he's going to come in and keep ticking over best he can. But we reckon he'll box again before the new year. It's a break, but it's not, it's not nothing too serious. If it heals, it should be fine. How did the injury happen? Yeah, was it sparring, I, I was asking? I, I think it's just been... Um, he started camp, and we've, we've had to get back into camp pretty full on straight away because we were told he was in this title fight so we've stepped the training up um, quite early mm. and I think it's just been a progression of hard training and you know maybe rushing him a little bit to get him fit for this fight and mm. so much Gev it's been um, probably an airline fracture but because boxers are tough they just mm. train through things and he's uh, he mentioned something about his foot a couple of weeks ago to me but he made it feel like it was oh my foot's a bit sore so I said, yeah, it's just probably aching or yeah. we're doing a lot of running, a lot of boxing training. And like I say, the, the tough, so their pain threshold is um, a lot higher than uh, what a normal person's would be. So he's, he's just carried on training and then he stepped back in the ring the other day and it went, it went for real then. So, yeah, it's uh, an airline fracture, but like I say, it won't be one that'll take probably another six week, eight week, because I don't want to rush it. Mm. This is something we've got to get right because I don't want it. Yeah, don't want like 
yeah, we got through the next camp and then the camp after it flaring up again. So um, it's somewhat where I've got experience of things like this in the past and we had to rush it. And then because we rushed it, it always seemed to raise its head again later on down the line. Wishing Jack, obviously a speedy recovery. Uh, moving on to another one of um, your, your stable mates, you've got um, Sam Maxwell coming out after you know, a devastating loss. He was very upset with, with that. Just tell me about when we can next see him out. He's recently <laughs> left the gym, so um, he's not got nothing up in the pipeline at the minute, but um, he's going to go down a different path. He said um, he wants to start training at Liverpool again. So, oh. yeah, I'd like to... He was in the other day, we've left, we've had a chat. But I'd like to wish him good luck with whatever he did in the future. Moving on to other things within boxing this week, it is the big fight week between Triple G and Canelo. Just to get your thoughts on that one. I just think it's a bit too much now for, tri uh, for Triple G. I just think Canelo's probably a younger man and I just think he's probably a little bit over the hill now. And mm. it's sad to say, but I think Canelo will stop him. Mm. Yeah, you yeah. think, yeah. What, yeah? what If that goes, what what round do you think you expect? Is that the later half of the fight? No, is it early? What is it? I think early. I think if he hurts him early on. Some of his fights recently, he's been getting tagged and he's been holding up Triple G and he's got one of the best chins in the business. <laughs> okay. But I can see shots are registered on him now. And I think with Canelo coming off the back of a loss, he's going to want to prove himself. So I think if he hurts him, it, it, he'll try and take him out. Other um, content, other news we've seen out is the the one on one uh, between Ben and, and Eubank. Uh, there is still news that fight may be pulled, but the thing that came out the other day when they had that sit down was that Eubank is going to abstain from having sex. Um, as a coach, this is obviously you know, is it normal for a fighter to, to, to do that anyway? I don't get the reasoning behind that though. Um, I f I think like probably I used to say it to um, the pros when they was younger and stuff. Obviously, as they get older, they should be wiser and know the body more anyway. But I used to say to them, like, a couple of weeks before you fight, no, lay off, really. Mm. No, save everything. You're coming into fight week and we ease the training down and everything else. And I just think maybe having that bit more sort of no testosterone in you because you've not, maybe not had sex, mm. um, may, maybe it kicks the animal instinct in a little bit more and it makes you a bit more fiery or so. I know as a male, sometimes when you don't get a bit for a bit, you, you, you're on edge, aren't you? So maybe it's the same with the boxers. I know I race pigeons as well. I did race pigeons. I don't do it anymore. But that used to be one of the motivations to make your pigeon race home. You keep it away from its girlfriend for the week. And then when it raced home, you'd let it have sex and, and maybe let it stay with it for a day or so. And then you take it away again. So every time it goes to the race, it needs to race home to get back for sex. So it used to work for them, so maybe it works for the boxers. No sex till after fight, <laughs> or no sex till after you win. <laughs> what did you make of that fight anyway when it first came out? I mean, Senior has, um, well, apparently, according to the Daily Mail, come out and said that he's pulling Junior out of the fight because yeah, it's a risk, he's saying, to his son's health. What did you make of that? It was a shock, yeah when I seen it advertised, the fight in the first place, but still an interesting one. Um, obviously, Ben's showing some good form. Eubank Jr.'s, uh, Eubank Jr., you know, he'll fight anybody. You can't, you can't say he won't, but um, I thought I was a bit shocked, but it's the re this rehydration stuff. If, um, if Senior thinks that it's wrong and it's not um, big enough, I'm, I'm a father myself, so I wouldn't like um, any of my lads risking the health and if it's what I've heard is five pound rehydration or yeah. something I think it's wrong make, let them make the weight they've agreed the weight and then let Eubank Junior go and rehydrate because you've got to put his safety first mm. you know what I mean he's took them extra three pound off mm. if that's what if that's what what it is and let him go and rehydrate you've already made him make an extra three pounds so that's took a little bit out of him mm. but you can't take it out for him then for the fight night as well by not letting him rehydrate. So whatever the clause is, if seeing you don't agree with it, then I, I, I'll agree with him. In the last, well, probably 15 to 20 minutes, we've had an announcement from Anthony Joshua and Anthony Joshua's team. He has accepted Fury's, um, yeah, Fury's directions in terms of the fight. December 3rd um, is yeah, meant to be that fight. What's your thoughts on that one? I still think it's a great fight. Um, I thought... Um, 
AJ boxed really well last time out, fought the first time. Even though he got beat, I still thought he pushed him. Every single round of the first fight, you set had to absolutely give his best. And like I say, it was not, not a great performance tactically off AJ, the first fight, but he still made you set work. And I thought the last fight was really good performance. Again, people you know afterwards or whatever, and messing about, throwing the belts out the ring and stuff like that. The fight's probably getting remembered for that, but it was a great fight again. And um, it was close enough. I had you set winning it maybe three, four rounds, but I still think whatever fight you put AJ in, mm -hmm. he's going to deliver. I, I thought he boxed well. I thought he looked good in part. He looked sharp. He was moving his head a little bit more. I thought his hands looked fast for the, for the big lad the size of him. So um, I, I think AJ gives anybody a fight. Never write him off. WBC have released their rankings. Anthony Joshua is now sixth in the rankings. Yeah, what's your, your thoughts on that one? That's one in front of uh, Dillian White. Um, that's behind Deontay Wilder, obviously Tyson Fury, Usyk. Is he number six in your opinion? No, I don't think so. I'd say he's three or four, me. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd liked him to have fought Wilder still. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'd say they was around the same, obviously. I've got Fiora, number one, Usyk, number two, and then Wilder or AJ. Yeah, I still think he's a good fighter. Still think, honestly, I think he can. Don't know what he's going to do with the team he's just put together, but I'd like to have thought I could see a little bit of a difference. And the longer he works with them, hopefully the, the better he'll be.